Good morning, everyone. During the previous lesson, we discussed the characteristics of lenses and the propagation of specific light rays. Today, we will start with a new lesson, Formation of Images, Part 1. Lenses are found in many optical instruments, as we previously mentioned, ranging from a simple magnifying lens to a camera zoom lens and to the eye. In this section, we will use the characteristics of light propagation to explore how converging lenses form images. We will discuss diverging lenses in the second part of this lesson. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to recall the elements of a converging lens and trace the pathway of particular light rays, illustrate the formation of images by a converging lens, determine the position, size, nature, and direction of images formed by a converging lens, and finally identify some uses of converging lenses. Before we start, we're going to recall some concepts from the previous lesson. So as you know, this is the symbol of a converging lens. X prime X represents the optical axis, which cuts the lens in the middle at the optical center O. The image focus F prime is located after the lens. Incident light rays parallel to the optical axis cut the optical axis at F prime. The object focus F is located before the lens and OF is equal to OF prime. Keep in mind that the focal length small f is equal to OF prime. You should also remember that some light rays follow specific pathways. In case one, an incident parallel light ray emerges from the lens passing through the image focus F prime, as you can observe in the figure. The second figure shows an incident light ray passing through the optical center O. The emerging light ray continues without deviation. On the other hand, an incident light ray issued towards the object focus F continues parallel to the optical axis X prime X. How does a converging lens form an image? To construct the image of an object produced by a converging lens, we should consider two light rays. First, an incident light ray issued from the object parallel to the optical axis. This light ray will emerge passing through F prime. Second, an incident light ray issued from the same location and passing through the optical center O. It will continue without deviation. The point of intersection of these two light rays is where the image will form as shown in the figure. Images formed by converging lenses have different characteristics. These images differ by their size. They can be magnified, thus seem larger than the actual object, or diminished, which means they are smaller than the actual object. Images formed by a converging lens also differ by their direction. An image can be erect, so it has the same direction as the object. We say it is right side up or it can be inverted, thus it is upside down. It has an opposite direction to the object. Images formed by a converging lens also differ by their nature. The image can be formed after the lens, so its nature is real. In this case, the image can be collected on a screen. This is similar to the case of an overhead projector used in class. On the other hand, when an image is formed before the lens, we say it is virtual. If you have noticed, virtual images are erect, while real images are inverted. The nature, size, and direction of images formed by a converging lens depend on the distance between the object and the optical center of the lens. Let's start with the first case, where D, which represents the distance between the object and the lens, is greater than 2f, then it is greater than double the focal length. In the following example, the focal length is equal to OF prime, it's equal to two divisions. Don't forget to multiply by the given scale one centimeter per division. Then OF prime is equal to two centimeter and 2f is equal to four centimeter. The object AB, which is represented by an arrow, is equal to three centimeter. It is placed at a distance equal to 5 cm. Then the distance from O to A 
is greater than double OF prime. To construct the image of AB, we should consider two light rays. As you already know, first we draw a light ray issued from B towards O. This light ray continues without deviation. Then we draw a light ray also issued from B parallel to X prime X. It deviates passing through F prime. The point of intersection of these two emerging light rays is B prime, the image of B. And the foot of perpendicular from B prime to the optical axis is A prime, the image of A. In this case, the image formed is after the lens, then its nature is real. It is upside down, formed below the axis, then it is inverted. Regarding its size, the number of divisions is 2, multiplied by the scale, so its size is 2 cm. Compared to the size of the object, the image is diminished. Finally, its position is the distance from O to A prime, which is equal to 3.5 cm. Don't forget the scale when determining the size and position of an object or an image. An example of this case in real life is the eye and camera where an inverted diminished image is formed. In the second case, D, which is the distance between O and A, is equal to double the focal length. In the following example, the focal length is equal to 2 cm, then double the focal length is equal to 4 cm. The object AB, which has a size equal to 3 cm, is placed at 4 cm, which is double the focal length. We follow the same steps and draw two light rays issued from B. The first parallel to the optical axis, which deviates towards F prime, and the second light ray, also issued from B, passing through the optical center O, which continues without deviation. The point of intersection of these two light rays is B prime, the image of B. And the foot of perpendicular from B prime to the optical axis is A prime, the image of A. As you can observe, the size and position of the image changed. The image is real because it's formed after the lens. It is inverted because it is upside down. However, in this case, the size of the image is the same as the object, which is equal to 3 cm. The distance from O to A prime is equal to 4 cm. This is the case of a photocopier machine where the image produced has the same size as the object. In the third case, the distance between O and A is bigger than the focal length, but is smaller than double the focal length. Notice the following example. OF prime is equal to 2 cm. Then the double of the focal length is equal to 4 cm. In this case, the object AB of size 3 cm is placed in between F and 2F at a distance equal to 3 cm. After drawing the pathway of the two light rays and determining the point of intersection of these two light rays, we are able to construct the image A prime B prime of the object AB. As you can notice, the image formed is real and inverted. Its size is 4 cm, then it is magnified, and it is located at a distance equal to 4.2 cm. This is similar to an overhead projector where the image is collected on a screen and it is larger than the object. Now we will start with the fourth case where the distance between O and A is equal to the focal length. In the following example, the focal length is equal to 2 cm. An object AB of size 3 cm is placed at the object focus F. Since the distance between O and A is equal to the focal length, to construct the image, we follow the same steps and continue the pathway of the two particular light rays. As you can notice, in this case, the emerging light rays are parallel and don't meet. Then we cannot draw the image and we say it is formed at infinity. Finally, in the fifth case, the distance between O and A is less than the focal length. In the following example, the focal length of this lens is equal to 2 cm. 
An object AB of size 1 cm is placed at a distance equal to 1 cm which is less than the focal length. After tracing the two light rays, you can notice that they do not meet after the lens. However, these two emerging rays aren't parallel. So if we trace their prolongations backward, they will meet before the lens. The point of intersection of these two prolongations is where the image is formed. Therefore, the image formed is before the lens, then it is nature is virtual. And it is right side up, then it is erect. In this case, the image is magnified where its size is equal to 3 cm. Its position is at 3 cm before the lens. Example of this case in our daily life is the magnifying lens. Now you are able to solve the following application where you have to draw the image A prime B prime of the object AB and give its characteristics. Please use a graph paper, a pencil and a ruler. Refer to the previous slides if you need any help and don't forget to pause the video then check your answers. So this is the case where D is greater than the focal length and less than double the focal length, then the image formed is real, it is inverted, and magnified. Don't worry if your values aren't accurate, since I'm not using a graph paper. In this case, where D is greater than 2F, the image formed is real, inverted, and diminished. The image formed in this case is virtual, erect, and it's magnified with respect to the object. This is the case where the distance between O and A is less than the focal length. Please study the notes and practice very well. Don't memorize the given values since they differ from one question to another. And I will send some extra exercises next week. Stay safe, everyone.